the Lord again, everybody. And I uh, want to welcome you uh, once again to the Touching the Hem of His Garment broadcast right here live on its web TV. And I'm so happy again to be here with you today. Uh, this is a wonderful day. Uh, God is in the midst of us. Amen. And he has some wonderful things that uh, to share through me, his vessel, that will, will be an encouragement and a blessing unto you today. So I pray that you'll get your hearts ready to receive and, and open up your spiritual ears uh, so that we can study the word of God together and we can hear uh, the heart of God for us today. I want you to be encouraged through this ministry. And I want you to know that I love you with the love of the Lord. And uh, my primary goal uh, in this ministry is that the, those that will listen, those that will hear the ministry of touching the hem of his garment will be whole, will become healthy mentally and spiritually. Uh, my goal is to minister unto you today, uh, to be encouraged and to hear clearly what God is saying uh, through me for your life. Amen. So I just thank God for the honor and I thank God for the privilege of being here today. And I also thank God for each and every one of you uh, that are watching me and that are listening here today. And uh, so if you've been with us for the past few weeks, we've done a series on seeking God, the importance of seeking God, the benefits of seeking God. But today we're going to switch up just a little bit and we're going to begin a series today on being about the Father's business. Amen. It is high time that we discover and that we understand that we seek God and know exactly what it is he is saying to us, what it is he is calling us to do, what God desires of us in this day and in this hour. And this is so important because we find that a lot of people are doing a lot of different things, but there aren't that many that are really doing what God has assigned them to do. And so I want us to listen closely today and search our hearts and get into that place of prayer and begin to seek God and ask of the Lord, Lord, am I really doing what you have called me to do? Or am I just busy? Or am I just doing good works? You know, sometimes good works uh, uh, may not be God's will. It's just good works. But God is looking for a people in the earth that will be submitted and committed to doing what he has assigned us to do. And so I want to encourage you today to uh, begin to pray and seek God and know that you know that you are in the will of God, that what you're doing is in the will of God and not just something good to do. Amen. So I'm going to begin our series today with a scripture that is found in Luke chapter 2. And I pray that you have your Bible so that you can read along with me. And we're going to begin reading at uh, verse 39. We're going to read from verse 39 to 49. Again, Luke chapter 2, verses 39 to uh, verse 49. And I will be reading from the King James Version. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? 
wist ye not that I must be about my father's business. Amen. And that is our subject matter for today, being about the father's business. And I like the way the NIV reads, and it, it reads like this. Jesus said, know ye not that I must be about my father's business? In other words, don't you know? Don't you understand? So let's do a quick summarization of, of our chapter. Every year, Jesus' parents traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And, and at this time, uh, when Jesus went along with him, he was 12 years old. But after the feast was over, while they were on their way back home, they discovered that Jesus was missing. The scripture says they traveled the day's journey uh, before they knew that Jesus was missing and they looked everywhere for him. They couldn't find him. They looked uh, in the company and amongst of their, their uh, kinfolk and they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. And so they turned around and they went back to Jerusalem. And after three days, uh, they found uh, Jesus in the temple uh, listening to the teachers and asking questions, inquiring of them. And the Bible talks about how they were amazed at Jesus' understanding. They were amazed at his answers and his questions. Uh, and uh, so at this point, uh, his mother and father, they finally found him. And his mother began to scold him just a little bit, you know, saying, Jesus, how could you do this? You know, you had us worried. Uh, how could you do such a thing? Because he left the camp without his mother and father's, uh, without their permission. And But Jesus answered them. He said to them, how is it that you sought me? How is it? Why are you looking for me? Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And we have to understand why Jesus said that. And it's because uh, when uh, uh, when the angel of the Lord visited Mary, she told him all about Jesus. She told him all about the son that she would carry and what he must do. Amen. So uh, in other words, Jesus is saying, you know, mom, why are you looking for me? You know, I have a work to do. You know that I am on assignment and it is now my time to do what I came unto the earth to do. And what it was simply saying, that it is now the time for me to uh, be about my father's business and to complete my mission in the earth. Amen. And so I also, I want to back up just a little bit. I want to go back up to verse 40 because there's a lot in it for us to glean from. And uh, it talks about how Jesus grew strong in spirit. It says that he was filled with wisdom and that the grace of God was upon him. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Now we're talking about a 12 year old boy. That's what makes this so phenomenal. And so what this is really saying is that Jesus was strong in his ability to think. He was strong in his ability to understand and to reason. It also means that he had sound judgment. He had good sense. Uh, Jesus had an enlightened understanding. He had knowledge and insight that was given to him from God. And the scripture also says that favor was upon him. Now, I want to call this the preparation for work preparation for work anything that we do for God there must be a preparation pro a process there must be a time where we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us there must be a time where we allow him to prepare us and to give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that we need for the work that he has called us to do and even at 12 years old, this had, this process had, had begun to happen in Jesus' life. Amen. And so as Jesus experienced the process of spiritual development, so must we. And I know some of you think, well, you know, that was Jesus. You know, he could do all these things. Amen. But I want you to understand something that Jesus is our perfect example. And while he walked the earth, even though he, he retained his divine nature, but he limited himself to human attributes and power. Let me say that again. Even though he retained his divine nature, he limited himself to what a human being was able to do so that he could be a true example of one who overcame sin, a true example of one that defeated and overcame all the works and the assignment of Satan by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to take a look at 
uh, Philippians. Turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. I'm going to read it from the NIV. And it says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross and this is what the scripture is saying a men and women of God is saying that Jesus Christ the son of God was in his very nature God and thus he was equal with God before during and after his ascension but he did not consider his equality with God something to be grasped in other words he emptied himself and he suspended his glory he suspended his deity for you and for me amen and he accepted human limitations with his frailties he accepted the weaknesses that we experience in this human body he, he even was susceptible to temptations yet he was without sin amen even suffering he was misunderstood he was mistreated amen even to the death of the cross he took on the nature of a servant for you and he took on the nature of a servant for me he allowed himself to go through everything that we could ever experience everything that we could ever deal with in life i'm rem i'm reminded of a scripture that says he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities he knows everything that we feel because he's experienced it he knows rejection because he was rejected amen he knows what it is to be hurt because he was hurt he knows what it is to be sorrowful because he was sorry at times amen he knows what it was to cry because even the bible says that jesus wept because his friend lazarus had died so there is nothing in this life that we could ever experience that jesus has not already experienced and he did it for a reason amen so because he limited himself to human attributes, he had to pray just like we had to pray. He had to seek the Father just like we have to seek the Father. He had to learn. The Bible says that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Amen. And he had to receive unto himself the same grace that is made available to us in order for him to accomplish the will of the Father in the earth. Amen. We need to be about our Father's business even as Jesus was about his Father's business. And so Jesus proved to us that by the same anointing of the Holy Spirit that he was under, we can also accomplish whatever we need to accomplish by the anointing and by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the grace, the powerful, mighty grace of God. He was our example, people of God. And this is so important to us today because many uh, are falling by the wayside. Many are turning away from God. Pastors are turning away from their calls. And I, I was even reading about a pastor just recently that took his own life because of the weight of ministry, because of the burden of the call that was upon his life. Amen. And uh, 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 and we are very sorry for that today. And we're praying uh, for his church and praying for his family. But many pastors are in the same place. I promise you that, that there is a percentage of pastors that quit ministry within the first five years of ministry. They quit because it's too much. But I sit here today to encourage somebody that you really can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to leaders and, and I'm talking to the body of Christ. Laity. There is nothing that you cannot do if you have the grace of God upon your life. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. 
and you don't have to quit. And I know that it is hard sometimes because I am a pastor and it gets hard for me. And many a days I felt just like that. There have been many times I felt like, God, did you really call me to this? There are times I felt like, God, you know, this is a bit too much. I didn't understand that when you call me, I would have to undertake so many burdens, amen, and so many hardships. But at the end of the day, I always have to go back to the fact that I know God's grace is upon me for the job. And I know that he has equipped me through his power. It is not through anything of myself that I can do what I do. I don't have the strength to do it. I don't have the mentality to do it. I don't have the wisdom to do what God has called me to do. But it is by his spirit and by his word that he enables me to stand. I can't even stand without him. Amen. And neither can you. But in this walk, I tell you, I'm truly learning how to depend upon God. And I'm truly learning that God is faithful to the faithful. Amen. So if you will just remain faithful to God, and if you will just allow God to be your strength, allow God to be your guide, he will be just that. You know, sometimes people feel as though I can do this by myself. I know what I'm doing. I know the way to go. But let me tell you something. You don't know nothing apart from God. You need him every step of the way. We need his wisdom every single day. Amen. We need his guidance every single day to do the work that he has called us to do. So I want to encourage you because it is truly time to be about our father's business. This is not the time for us to take down or take back. It's not the time for us to give up or quit. Is not the time to faint, for Jesus is soon to come. And not only that, there are blessings that make rich and add no sorrow. They are on the horizon for the faithful. Amen. God is getting ready to do something great. He's getting ready to make the load lighter. Amen. And God is getting ready to assign help to us that will be faithful and committed. Amen. Help. Amen. That will not rise up against us, but people that will come and draw alongside of us that are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. People that are strong and people that are mature to help us carry the visions that God have given us. And even the people that God have already given us, he's doing a mighty work in them. I'm telling you, it might not look like it sometimes, but God is doing a mighty mighty work in his people. He's doing a mighty work in those that love him and desire him. Amen. So I pray that that will encourage some of you today. Amen. And we're going to get back to our teaching because there's, there's so much in this that will be a blessing to our lives. Amen. So uh, Philippians 2 and 5 talked about, uh, let this same mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this same mind be in you. See, Jesus had a certain mindset. He had a certain attitude about things. Amen. Now, what was that? What is this talking about? What this passage of scripture is talking about is having the same humility of heart as Christ had. Having the same mindsets as Christ had. It's talking about having the same obedient heart that Jesus had. Amen. It's talking about having the same humility that Jesus had. You have to remember that Jesus left his throne in glory. Come on. He left the very glory of God. He left the very presence of God. He left his seat at the right hand of the Father. And he came down through generations and he took on flesh in the form of a servant. That is humility at its best. Amen. You can't, you can't get no more humble than that. And then the scripture is talking about considering uh, your others, the life of others, uh, more important or valuable than your own. See, that's the mind and the attitude of Christ. Everything that he did, he did it for us. He didn't do it for himself. He did it because he loved us. And he did it because he wanted to please the Father. And everything that we do in ministry, being a born-again Christian, everything that we do in life ought to be because we love one another. It ought to be 
uh, out of our love for God and out of our desire to please God, if we don't get the foundation right, if we don't have those things settled in our heart, then everything that we do is going to be off kilter and it's going to be out of the wrong motivation. Amen. And so we have to make sure that we have the heart of Christ, the mind of Christ, the humility of Christ, the attitude of Christ uh, as a basis for everything that we do. Why are we doing what we do? Why do we go to church? Why do we serve on different auxiliaries and boards? Why do we preach the gospel? I'm telling you, it's time for us as a people of God to begin to examine ourselves because many have the wrong motive. Many are preaching for money and preaching for selfish gain. Many are singing out of selfish ambition. But it is time for us to search ourselves now and allow the Spirit of God to purify our hearts and purify our motives because I promise you, we don't want to wait till we stand before the Lord. Amen. We want to get it right in the here. We want to get it right now. So why do you want to preach? Why do you want that title? Amen. Examine yourself and don't examine yourself in your own eyes. Let the Holy Spirit examine you and and hear clearly what he is saying unto you. And if he says, repent, repent. If he says, you need a change of heart, say, yes, Lord. Amen. Because nobody knows us better than the Holy Spirit. There are times in my life when I went before the Lord. And I would ask him certain things about myself, but I discovered that I asked him. I already had had a pre a, a premeditated answer. I already had the answer, amen. Because I thought that I was this or I was that or I didn't have this and I didn't have that. But the Lord spoke to me one day. He said, "You gonna listen to yourself, or you gonna listen to me? You have to empty yourself. You have to humble yourself to even hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you." And so I had to pull down what I thought was right about myself and say, Lord, now what are you saying? What do you see in me? What is it I need to do? And boy, was I surprised. Amen. But I learned how to humble myself when I go before God. I don't go before the Lord saying, well, I know I'm all right and I know this and I know that. Only God can shine the light in the crevices of our soul. And see what really lies there. Only God can shine his light in the crevices of our heart. And see what is really lurking there. What is really unclean. What is unlike him. And only God can clean that space. Amen. And so this is a season and an hour. Where we need to be before the Lord. And saying God shine your light on me. God purify me. Purify my motives God. In the name of Jesus. Not if you find anything in me. But what you find in me Lord take it out and purify me because I want to be whiter than snow I want to be holy and clean from within and from without and that's the heart that God is looking for amen and so uh, we were he were he was talking about uh, having the same attitude of Christ concerning all of these matters concerning all of these issues that we have just talked about amen I want to look at uh, John chapter 5 and verse 30. And in this verse, Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And now let's look at John 8 and 28. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. You see, Jesus was totally dependent upon the father for everything. He was completely committed and submitted to God, completely submitted and committed to his will. And his only desire was to do the will of God. And, I, you know, I just have to say that nowadays that is not always the case with us believers. A lot of times, you know, we set out to build our own kingdom, to build our churches the way we want to build them, to run them the way we want to run them. But the Bible says that 
Jesus is the chief shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Amen. And we need to be like him. We need to have his attitude. Even in that, Lord, how do you want me to build this ministry? What is your vision for this ministry? What are you saying, God? What is your will for these, your people? Amen. And that's another thing we have to understand, even in ministries, that people belong to God. They do not belong to us. They are entrusted to us as pastors. I'm talking to some pastors right now. Amen. And we need to go back and, and, and just kind of redo some things and make God first and get back on that uh, a place of prayer. Get back on our knees and begin to seek God for vision, for direction, for the way that he would have us to go concerning his sheep. We need to seek God as to how he wants us to feed his sheep. Amen. We, we need to seek God for how he wants us to entreat his sheep. And most, and even uh, most importantly, we need to begin to ask God for a baptism of love for his sheep because God loves his people. Now that's not I wasn't planning to go there today, but somebody needs to hear this today. Amen. Somebody needs to go back. Amen. Again, and let God redo you all over again. Let God give you a spiritual makeover again so that you can get back on track and do things the way that God intended for you to do them in the first place. God wants you to put your agenda to the side and pick up his agenda for the work that he have called you to do. And I promise you that as you be obedient to the word of the Lord today, God's going to bless you and God's going to turn that ministry around and God's going to cause that ministry to grow and blossom. Amen. To be blessed, to be prosperous, naturally and spiritually. Amen. And I pray that you receive that today. But I submit to you today that Jesus, he was Jesus. Amen. But because he was in the flesh, he had to submit himself to the Father in everything that he did. He had to pray. He had to spend time. Amen. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus prayed, he said, Lord, you know, if you will, let this cup pass from me. But if not, Lord, nevertheless, your will be done. Jesus did not want to suffer the cross. He did not want to suffer the agony and the shame. And the Bible says that he prayed so hard that, that his sweat was as great drops of blood. And by the way, that is a, a real medical condition that can happen. And it did happen to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. But at the end of that prayer, Jesus said, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. People of God, we've got to have that nevertheless heart. There are many things that we may not want to do. There are many things that we may feel that we are incapable of doing. But if God has called you to do it, then you can do it. Amen. And he just wants you to surrender your will, surrender your heart to him. And that's not only for preachers and teachers and pastors and leaders, but that's for laity. If you have named the name of Christ, if you are saved, you are born again, you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You've been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the greatest things that you can ever do is yield your will to God's will in everything in all things we have to always have that nevertheless because i promise you something everything that god tells us to do can we just be real here everything that god says for us to do we don't always want to do it amen but we learn as we grow and as we mature in him it's always best to obey the will of God. Amen. So Jesus had to study. Jesus, the, the, he had to learn. He had to pray. He had to become spiritually developed. And even as he did, so must we. We must also allow God to spiritually develop us. 
and this process is absolutely, say absolutely necessary, amen, and it's necessary for us so that we can be able to withstand the adversary, it's necessary, amen, because when you come into the call of ministry, there's always going to be adversities, there are always going to be problems, there are always going to be something that's going to be going on, when you just, you know, accept Christ in your life, you may not be in ministry, amen, the enemy is not going to make it easy for you, somebody lied and told us once you got saved that all of your problems, all your problems were going to go away, no, when you get saved and you give Christ your life, honey, you in a whole different warfare there, amen, and so um, the Lord wants us to know that as we submit ourselves to, to him, and as we depend upon him, he will bring us out, amen, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivereth us out of them all, amen, this process is, is necessary so that you can learn how to live a holy and, a, and a obedient life, a holy and obedient life, amen, God works in us, amen, so that we can learn what pleases him, We're, we find ourselves in situations and circumstances sometimes, amen, but even in that, God will teach us what pleases him, he'll teach us, amen, what he desires of us through his written word, amen. Amen. And so the Lord is saying he wants us to develop a spiritual ear so that we will be able to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Amen. I'm reminded of a scripture that talks about hearing they do not hear, seeing they do not see. Amen. We need revelation. We need to lend ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that he can open us up and he can begin to pour into us the revelation that we need to understand the word of God, to understand the will of God, to understand what God is saying. Uh, I remember the uh, the prayer that Paul prayed when he talked about the eyes of our understanding being open and being enlightened. Those are prayers that we need to be praying in this hour. God, open my understanding. God, enlighten me so that I can see what you see, so that I can understand and perceive what it is that you are saying. Amen. Too many times we, we uh, try to figure things out on our own and we think we know because we read something. But I'm going to tell you something. We need God in everything that we do. We need God when we're reading the scriptures. We need the Holy Ghost to come upon us and to open our eyes and open our understanding and explain things to us so that we can really be sure of what it is that God is saying. And this is a part of the process. The Bible says that Jesus was enlightened. Jesus had great understanding. How do you think he got those things? He got those things through prayer. He got those things through communing with the Father, communing with the Spirit of God. He got those things because he was teaching and that's one of the things that's lacking in the body of Christ nowadays. Everybody think they know. Nobody's teachable anymore. Nobody wants to submit to the pastors. Nobody wants to submit to the teachers because now all of a sudden they know more than they do. Honey, the devil is a liar. Amen. And he is a deceiver. And I'm telling you something. If God set you in a place, God planted you in a place, you better humble yourself and receive what you need to get from that place. The spirit of pride has risen up in the body of Christ and specifically in our leaders now and in our praise and worship leaders and our ministers amen they're just rising up against their pastors in rebellion and God is going to judge that believe me God is going to judge that and I want to encourage somebody today don't worry about it I hear the Lord saying don't worry about it those that have risen up against you don't worry about it you just keep walking and you just keep doing what I've told you to do you keep your eyes upon me and God is saying I've got your back today he says I'm going to deliver you and I am going to vindicate you but you walk in love you walk in the fruit of the spirit and you allow me to do what I I have to do on your behalf. God said, don't you deal with it. Let me deal with it because only God is just and only God is right and only God is fair. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the process that I'm talking about is also necessary because God wants to develop in us a tender heart. 
God wants to develop in us a heart that is pliable in his hands. And what that simply means is that, you know, sometimes we could be hard hearted and we don't want to obey God and we don't even want to hear what God is saying. And I know some of you have been there. I've been there before. I didn't want to. There are times I didn't want to hear what God was saying because I was afraid of what he was going to tell me. I was afraid that he was going to tell me to do something that I did not want to do in that particular circumstance. So we have we have to allow the spirit of the Lord to tenderize our heart so that our hearts will be obedient unto him. So that our hearts will say yes to whatever God is saying, even when we don't want to. There's a um, scripture over in the Psalms it says that God will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him that word delight means to be joyful in him it means to be happy in him but it also means to be pliable in his hands that means to be like putty that means to be moldable that means to be usable that means that God whatever you say I say yes and amen it's like being putty in the potter's hands amen amen and that's what God wants us to be today he wants us to be pliable. He wants us to be tender uh, toward him. And, you know, you can tell when you're hard before the Lord, you know, you'll avoid those areas in prayer. You won't really pray about them. You know, you just kind of skip over them. Amen. But when you, when God begins to deal with your heart and God begins to tenderize your heart, you'll find yourself saying, Lord, whatever you say, God, whatever your will is, Lord, I'm sorry, God, I repent. Forgive me for my hard heart. And that's what somebody needs to begin to pray today. You need to just ask God to forgive you for the hardness that's been in your heart. You need to begin to ask God to give you more tenderness uh, in your heart, to make your heart a heart of flesh and to take out the heart in the stony places. And I promise you when you do, it'll be such a place of peace and such a place of joy. I know that from my own experience. And I found out that my arms are too short to box with God. Amen. In the end, God is going to win in me. You want to know why? Because I love him with all my heart, mind, and soul. And even when sometimes I might be stubborn uh, toward the Lord, I love God more than I love everything. And he always comes in uh, just when I least expect it. He'll begin to deal with my heart ever so beautifully. I tell you, there's nothing like the presence of God. There's nothing like it when the love of God just falls on your heart, especially when you know you're wrong. Amen. God will come and he'll minister to your heart. Amen. In such a loving and such a kind way. And you can't compare it to anything in this life. Amen. I love God so much and I know that you love him too. He is so good to us. Even when we don't deserve it, God is good to us. Amen. And so we also need to to uh, uh, surrender ourselves to the process of allowing God to make us and mold us, amen, so that we can gain the wisdom and the understanding that we need in every area of our life. If you're going to be effective in ministry, if you're going to be effective in just being a Christian and loving people, you need the wisdom and the knowledge of God upon your life. And all you have to do is begin to pray for it and, and acknowledge that you don't have this apart from God. And begin to pray, Lord, give me your wisdom. Lord, give me knowledge. God, give me understanding. Give me the insight I need to be the best Christian that I can be. To be the best pastor I can be. To be the best teacher, preacher, whatever your call is that I can be. I need you, God. And as we begin to pray prayers like that, I promise you God will begin to minister to your life. He'll begin to bless your life. Your understanding will begin to change your desires will begin to change. Your heart toward God and people will begin to change because there will be a, a, a wonderful, beautiful working of the Holy Spirit, Spirit on the inside of you. Amen. Praise God. So as Jesus did, so must we do. So must we do. We must humble ourselves. We must seek God. We must put God first. Amen. We must acknowledge him in all that we do. Amen. In order for us to be blessed and prosperous in this life. Amen. So as Jesus did, so must we do. This is one of the reasons why many are shipwrecking today. Because they've not humbled themselves. They've not sought God. They've not sought the Father. Amen. And so many are giving up in ministry 
They're becoming discouraged because they've not allowed God to be big enough in, in their lives. Amen. This is the reason why so many are discouraged today. Because we're trying to do too much apart from God. This process was necessary for Jesus. And I want you to ask yourself the question, what is it that makes us think that it's not necessary for us as well? If Jesus had to go through this process, so must we. The success of any ministry depends upon our receiving adequate wisdom, strength, and empowerment from the Holy Spirit. The success of just being a born again Christian and living holy and the way that God wants you to live depends upon your receiving an adequate uh, adequate wisdom and strength and empowerment and impartations from the Holy Spirit. Amen. But all of that depends upon our willingness to humble ourselves. It depends upon our submission. It depends upon our obedience. Our willingness to stop trying to do things our way and do only what we hear and perceive the Father saying unto us. That's what Jesus did. Amen. It is past time now. It's past time for us to lay down our personal agendas and be about our Father's business. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. But it's about the will of God. This is why we live. This is why we breathe. This is why we have our being. This is why we are in the earth today. Because we are predestined men and women of God. We have assignments to complete. Amen. We have much, much work to do. But we got to get back to the basics. Amen. And make it about the right thing. It's about doing the will of God. God. Amen. It's not about how good you can preach or how good you can sing or how good you can teach. It's only about doing the will of God. Amen. God will develop in us whatever needs to be developed in us if we just set out to do his will. If we just set out to, to make him first. If we just set out to please him. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the word about. It's time to be about the father's business that means in connection with or relating to everything in our lives need to be in connection with or relating to the will of God for our lives and I want to ask you a question today is what you are doing connected to the will of God for your life have you been in communion with God enough or long enough to know precisely what the will of God is amen Jesus said, I do what I perceive the Father saying to me. I only do what God, what my Father is telling me to do. That's what Jesus said. Amen. And that's what we must begin to do. Amen. Amen. We must begin to do only that which we hear Jesus, the Father, telling us to do. Amen. And as we set out to do these things in this manner, all that we do will be blessed. Because God promised, I'll lead you and guide you in the way that you should go with my eye upon you. That means I'll instruct you, I'll teach you, I'll give you guidance, I'll give you wisdom, amen, in everything that you set out to do. And do you know that when God does that for us, we cannot fail and we will not fail, amen. And so I want to encourage your hearts today. Be about the Father's business, not your business, or not what somebody else told you to do. Amen. We got a lot of people doing stuff nowadays because somebody told them to do it. We have a lot of people that are walking in calls they don't belong in because somebody called them to it. God is the only one that can call you to ministry. Amen. That should call you to ministry anyway. God is the one with the purpose and the plan for your life. And as you, as you will allow him to minister to you, as you will allow him to speak to you, as you will allow him to guide you, as you acknowledge him in all of your ways, the Bible says that he will direct your path and I don't know about you but I tell you one thing once you've tried your path long enough and you found out it don't work 
Amen. You'll be running to Jesus and say, Lord, show me the way that you will have me to go. Amen. The word of God says he'll make your feet like hinds feet that you might tread upon the high places. Amen. We need God more than we think, people of God. We need him in everything that we do. And, and if we allow God to lead us and guide us the way that he wants to, can you imagine how many lives you will be a blessing to? Can you imagine how many souls will be saved? Can you imagine how many sick will be healed just because you're following the, the way of God, just because you're doing it the way God said do it? Can you imagine the prosperity and blessing that will come into your life because you're doing it God's way? Amen. There are great blessings in following God's way. There are great blessings in obeying the voice of the Lord, not just for your life, but for the lives of others. Amen. So I encourage you again today, do it God's way. Be about your father's business. Let him make you. Let him mold you. Amen. Let him crush you. Let him break you. Whatever it takes until your will is broken. And you have that nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, I was saying to our people just a few short days ago is that sometimes we can find ourselves in predicaments and situations and doing things that was never God's will. And we try to figure out, well, why isn't this working and why isn't that working? Because we were just doing stuff just to be doing it or because the opportunity uh, presented itself. But every good thing is not a God thing. And you have to remember that. There are many things that will be presented to you in your life. Every door is not a God door. Amen. But God said, if you seek me, I'll lead and guide you in the way that you should go. If you acknowledge me, I won't let you go wrong. I won't let you veer to the right and I won't let you veer to the left. But I'll keep you on that plain path that I have predestined and designed for your life. That's what God will do when you, when you make it about the Father's business. Amen. It's not your business, but it's God's business. And God's business has to be done God's way. Amen. Praise God. Well, I pray that you were blessed by this word today. I pray that you will take it to heart. I pray that you will just let it uh, minister to your mind, minister to your heart and your spirit, that you'll get into that place of prayer and you'll begin to seek the Lord and say, Lord, you know, show me where I'm off track. Show me where I'm on track. Uh, show me exactly what I need to see for my life. Show me exactly what I need to see so that I might uh, uh, perfectly uh, fulfill your plan and your purpose for my life. Do you know God desires that? You know that that is God's will for your life, and he will do just that. All you have to do is ask him. All you have to do is seek him. And I just sense in my spirit that there are those of you that are listening today, you know you need to go back. And you know that you need to inquire of the Lord again. Some of you know that you have gotten off track and you're going in the wrong direction. You know that God has not sent you in that direction. But God is saying to you today, if you just repent and turn around, he says, I'll forgive you and lead you in the way that you need to go. Amen. There are some of you that may not be sure of the direction that God has for your life. All you have to do is pray. Spend time in quality prayer with him. Spend time with him. And he'll show you because he's good like that. God wants you to be in the right vein. He wants you to be in the right track. He wants you to be on the right road and doing the right thing uh, unto his uh, glory, honor, and his praise. You know, when we are when we're in that place in God where we're doing exactly what God has told us to do, people will be edified and God will be glorified from your life. Don't you want that today? Amen. I, I don't ever want it to be said of me, she did this, she did that. I want it to be said of me that God used her mightily. Amen. I want it to be said of me that she was a woman of God, a servant of the Lord. And God's hand and his anointing was upon her and she walked in the way and the will of God. That's all I want. I just want to please God today. I want his will. And so sometimes I have to make an exchange. I have to say, here, Lord, this is what I want, but you take my will. And you give me your will. There has to be an exchange sometimes. Sometimes you have to lay down your plans and lay down your ideas and lay down the things that you want to do and take up your cross and follow God. Amen. Take up your cross today and follow the Lord. And I encourage all of you that are listening today, just let God be God. Let God be God in your life. 
Let God love on you. Let God change you where you need to be changed. Let God minister to your heart where you need to be ministered to. It's time for that. I surrender all, Lord. I surrender all. It's time for complete surrender now. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. It makes me think about those old songs where he leads me, I will follow. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. You got to make up your mind today that wherever God leads you, that's where you'll go. Amen. Amen. Well, I praise God for you today. I thank God for you today. And I pray for you with all of my heart. I pray for myself today. I'm not exempt. I'm first partaker of this word. But I pray that God will lead us and that God will guide us. I pray that everywhere that we may have taken a wrong turn, that God will get us back on track right in the center of his will. Amen. I pray that God will do everything that he needs to do in us to process us and to make us ready and make us able amen and willing servants amen in his kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that God will strip off all self will that he'll strip off pride and arrogance that keeps us trying to do it our way amen I pray God will strip us and purify us from these things and make us holy unto him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if that's your prayer today, I want you to agree with me and say yay and amen. And it is so. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for joining me right here for touching the hem of his garment ministries and I pray uh, as always that you are being blessed by this ministry I pray that you will continue to tune in and watch tell a neighbor tell a friend amen the pastor Karen is here ministering the word of the Lord I want you to tune in and watch it today support this ministry with your prayers support this ministry with your love amen and just a reminder uh, that I'm a senior pastor of Going Forth Ministries International. We are located in the city of Roseville, Michigan, and our address is 28491 Utica. We're about a quarter of a mile off of Gratiot. Our services are being held inside of Evangel, uh, Evangel Christian Churches temporarily. Amen. And our services are at 3 o'clock every Sunday afternoon we would love to have you come and visit and come and join us amen we'll love on you with the love of the lord the presence and the glory of the lord is there with us amen and on wednesday nights our prayer and bible class is at six o'clock right now we're just in a time of prayer we're just on our faces just seeking the lord so if there's anybody that would like to come and join us just lay on your face before the lord you can walk the floor and pray whatever you need to do we're just in communion with god because god has called us to prayer we're in that time of seeking his face and seeking his will for us amen so we want to invite you to come on out and join us uh, if you have any questions or if you just need prayer you can call us anytime at 586 229-0287 amen if you want prayer uh, after we go off the air here at its web you can call 248-996-8954 we'll be here and available to pray for you um, and so just keep those things in mind I pray that you will join us again on next week for touching the hem of his garment right here live on its web TV a proprietor uh, none other than Kevin Lewis amen an awesome man of God amen and I'm just going to put a plug in right there you got a word of the Lord in your belly and you know God has called you to the nations you know that you um uh, have a, a ministry uh, such as this, why don't you give uh, Kevin Lewis a call at 248-996-8954. There is a space for you. Amen. And so we just thank God for you. We praise God for you. And uh, we pray that God's face will shine upon you, that his blessings, his grace, and mercy will be upon you each and every day of your life. We love you with the love of the Lord. And until next time, you be blessed. God bless you.